God our Father and from the Lord Jesus, dear friends. Imagine a young man leaving home for the very first time. He doesn't have much with him, only what he can carry. He's not sure exactly where he's going or what he's going to do once he gets there. He doesn't know when or even if he'll ever see his family again. He's not exactly leaving on the best of terms. He's not really sure where he stands with God. He hasn't exactly been a model believer. Well, after a day's journey, he stops to rest for the night. The darkness and the quiet kind of allow him to consider the immensity of the situation that he's in. He's struggling with fear and uncertainty, with regrets, guilt. Finally, sleep overcomes him, and then he has this incredible dream. He sees this stairway let down from heaven to earth, angels going up and down, and God himself at the very top, and he begins to speak to this young man. Incredible words of promise. I will bless you, and I will bless your descendants. In fact, I will bless all peoples of the earth through you. And I am with you, I will watch over you, and I will not leave you until I have done everything I promised you. In a very dramatic way, God tells Jacob, I have come close to you in order that you might be close to me. God comes to a disobedient deceiver, a runaway, and he turns him into the one who would wrestle with God and overcome. He turns him into one who would later on be regarded as a model of faith. In our gospel reading today, we see Jesus, the Son of God, come to ordinary men and call them to be his followers, his disciples. He promises them great things and a glorious future. Like that stairway that Jacob saw in his dream. Jesus is the one that has come from heaven to earth to take people like the disciples and us and raise us up to God. He is that stairway to heaven. In Jesus, our God descends to us so that we in turn might ascend to him. A portion of God's word that we'll look at today is from the Gospel of John chapter 1. Since these are the words of our Savior, I invite you to please stand for our reading. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. So stairways are constructed to connect <clears throat> what's below with what's above. If you want to get from the first floor up to the second floor, you construct a stairway. 
But to connect with God on high is a different sort of thing. Many people have tried to find some way to connect with God on high, but none have succeeded. See, no matter how hard we try to do everything that God demands in His law, we simply cannot rise to His level. Not even some of those great heroes of faith, people like Abraham or Moses, were ever able to do that because like you and I, each one of them failed at some point or another. And yet God promised a connection. He promised a stairway. He promised to send His Son in whom He would descend to us in order to bring us close to Him. Philip understood that. He recognized that Jesus was that stairway that God promised. He recognized that because of all that the Old Testament prophets had written about the coming Savior. Remember the way that Philip invited Nathaniel? He said, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Philip was telling Nathaniel that this Jesus is that great prophet that Mo- Moses promised was coming. This Jesus is that humble branch that the prophet Isaiah wrote about. He is also that righteous and glorious king that Jeremiah spoke about. Through these Old Testament prophecies, God worked faith in the hearts of his people, faith that trusted that he would keep that promise of a Savior. God gave his people a description of that promised Savior so that they would be able to recognize him when he came. Through the word, many recognized that Jesus was the stairway. Through those promises, many saw that Jesus was the one in whom God had descended to the people of this world. And it's through the word that God continues to do that work of presenting us with that link between heaven and earth. At the end of his gospel, John says this, These words are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. In our second lesson today, the Apostle Paul said this to the Thessalonians, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel. See, it's through the Word and through the Savior that it presents that God descends to the people of this world to draw us close to Him. But now that doesn't mean that people are never going to have objections to the Word. It doesn't mean that every time that that Word is shared, people are going to immediately come to faith in Jesus and that connection will be made. Now remember Nathaniel. He wasn't convinced right away. He had his own objections and he stated them. As we share the good news about Jesus with others, we're going to hear plenty of different objections as well. As we seek to simply invite people to church, we're going to hear these objections, things like, ah, there's too many hypocrites at church. Why would I want to go to a place like that? Or, I don't need to be a part of some organization in order to be in a relationship with God. I'm doing just fine on my own. Or maybe we'll hear things like this, you know, who would want to believe in a God who allows such bad things to happen to his people? Why would I want to follow a God like that? And the thing is, clever answers or arguments on our part are not going to overcome these objections and these doubts. Only continued exposure to the Word of God, can do that. Philip understood that. He knew how Jesus and his Word had convinced him. And so he knew that Nathanael could be convinced as well. So rather than arguing with Nathanael about whether or not anything good could come out of Nazareth, Philip simply says, come and see. Only the Word Only that powerful word can overcome people's doubts and opposition. Because it's through that word 
that God sends the Savior. He descends to us in order to draw us close to Him. God's whole purpose in giving the Word is so that hearts might be changed, souls might be saved. God's whole purpose in descending from on high to here below is in order to grab the people of this world, you and I, and lift us up to be with Him. That purpose is achieved every time that someone comes to faith in Jesus. We saw it in our Gospel reading. Jesus called to Philip, and he followed. Philip reached out to Nathaniel, and after a time, Nathaniel was convinced as well. That's the power of God's Word. See, through that Word, Jesus not only invites us to put our trust in Him, He also gives us the strength to do that very thing. Through that Word, God not only descends to us to save us, but by that powerful Word, we are lifted up trust in Him, and to serve Him. In Jesus, we ascend to our God. And when we are brought to faith in that Savior, it means that we are fully ascended to our God. This is not just the first step in a long process by which we hope that someday, by our continued efforts, we might make it to the top of that stairway and somehow find our way into heaven. No, through faith in Jesus, our sins are completely forgiven. Through faith in Jesus, heaven is already our home. And yet God wants us to understand that that's not the end of things for us. Because that faith that he has worked in our hearts, it lives, it grows, it thrives. Every day, that sinful nature in us is Put down. Every day those sinful doubts that still plague us are put aside. And in their place, our Savior, through that word, continues to encourage our hearts and strengthen us for every good deed and word, just as Paul told the Thessalonians. These good deeds and words we call fruits of faith, and they flow naturally in the lives of God's people, whenever that connection is made with him through faith in Jesus. Think back to Jacob. After God came to him in that amazing dream and spoke those tremendous promises to Jacob, we're told that immediately he was moved to worship God, that he pledged that he would trust in God from this point forward, and he promised that he would return to God a tenth of everything that he had received from God. Jacob's faith sprung into action. And the same thing will be true for us. As we hear that gospel message, we'll be moved to worship and to praise. We'll be instilled with a greater trust and confidence in God's Word. We'll be moved to give generously and to serve faithfully. That's what the gospel works in God's people. Great things. What about for Philip? After Jesus called him to follow he was immediately moved to share that good news with Nathaniel. He started in the most natural place with somebody he knew, and he used the simplest of language. He says, Nathaniel, we found him. It's Jesus. Well, in the same way, the gospel is going to move us to share it with others as well. And really, can there be any better plan for evangelism than when God uses one of his redeemed people to take that message to somebody that they know? To simply invite them, come and see. And look at Nathaniel. Despite his initial objections, we see the fruits of faith in his life too. Nathaniel was moved to make this beautiful confession about Jesus. He said, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Faithful, public confession of the truth is also a fruit of faith. Our love for the truth of God's Word, our desire to see it maintained here in our congregation is going to be clear for everyone to see and hear. These are great things. And yet Jesus says, there are greater things still coming for His people. To His first disciples, He said, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. 
As these first disciples continued to follow Jesus here on earth, they would see him walk on water and calm storms with a single word. They would see him heal the sick and raise the dead. They would see him complete the work of their salvation and keep all of God's promises. They would watch as their guilt and sin and shame was removed at the cross and replaced with Jesus' perfect life. Jesus would show them that it wasn't their fruits of faith that assured them of a spot in his kingdom, but rather it was his life and death and resurrection in their place that guaranteed their home in heaven. These first disciples would watch as Jesus physically ascended into heaven and they would know that they would follow. They saw great things as they followed Jesus here on earth. But now, having followed him home to heaven in glory, those first disciples have seen even greater things. Jesus says he has greater things in mind for us as well. As we follow him here in this world, we see by faith what his first disciples saw with their eyes. Again and again, as we search the scriptures, We rejoice in the account of Jesus' life lived for us to make us right with God. We find comfort and pardon in the account of Jesus' death whereby all our sins were removed. We find hope, confidence in the account of Jesus' resurrection knowing that we're going to follow him. As we continue to grow in our knowledge of these truths, God produces tremendous fruits in our life. But Jesus says more is coming. As we continue to search those scriptures, our Savior takes us up to the top of that stairway. And he gives us glimpses of what he has in store for us in eternity. He tells us that we're going to see when he comes in all his glory with the holy angels. We're going to see him descend once more to lead his people home. He tells us that through him the day is going to come when body and soul, we are going to ascend. So we will be with the Lord forever. Greater things are coming. Jacob saw the stairway in a dream. and It changed his life. Those first disciples saw the stairway face to face. And it changed their lives. We see that stairway in the Word. And it changes our lives too. Jesus is that stairway to heaven. Our God and Savior descending to us in order to raise us up to him. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.